had a late start this afternoon. We left Hobart about six o'clock and headed up to Lonnie because we're going camping tomorrow. And we stopped in Lonnie at Alice's Cottages again. And this time we're going Irish. So let me show you about. <laughs> First of all, we've got a nice fireplace. For a long time, I've been <laughs> Jeff's watching some musical show on TV. Say oh. hi, Jeff. Oh, good day. I'm here in the Irish cottage. <laughs> Why? I let him. <laughs> so they've got all these little decorations. This is the little kitchenette. We just had um, hot dogs. We had to bring the camping gear in. And um, they do a really nice breakfast at Alice's. That um, this tray that you see here, that's what they provide you as part of the cost of your um, of your room. So really nice, tasty breakfast. A free drink. We've all prepared them and some crackers and stuff, which we didn't eat, so we'll have them later. And the rest of the stuff in there is at Alice's. That's the camp stuff. Back door takes you out to a little patio out the back. You can see the sun when it's a sunny day. This is the um, bedroom. A nice little pack here of soaps and yeah, the bed looks really comfortable. It's really high. Didn't know how I was going to get in there. And if you come in here, this is just ridiculously big. So you've got all normal hanging stuff in here, a nice little sitting area, I've got my makeup mat so I look pretty. That is the most elaborate toilet roll holder I think I've ever seen. I'm guessing there's probably a hot water system behind there. Toilet, dirty, heater, most importantly, the spa. Every hotel should have one. Last time I had one here, it had the, the pot puree in it. I'm hoping this one doesn't. Give it a go. Yeah. So it's really, really pretty. There's a couple of different cottages that you can stay in here. There's the boudoir. It's the boudoir, isn't there? That's it. You can stay. You can stay in the boudoir. You can stay in the Camelot, which is where we were last time. Yeah. And then you can stay in the English, Irish, Scottish, or Wales. I believe are the four up here. Wales. I'm pretty sure it's a Wales. Or am I wrong? I don't think it's Wales, but... What is it then? I don't know. Well, what else would it be? You can't stay in a whale. You've got Irish and you've got Scottish. So they have to be English and Wales. They're the four. <laughs> All right. Time to sit down, take it easy. And watch some more of this crap singing contest that's on right now. What is it? America's Got No Talent. I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> So after indulging in the spa, as I do, we said goodbye to Alice's Cottages and we headed down into the city of Launceston because we needed to stop into BCF and Anaconda because every time you go camping you always forget something. And then following our trip into town we will be heading out to Baker's Point. It was a lovely stay in Alice's Cottages last night. The, um, the cottages are actually very quite odd. The cottage is quite old. The um, Partridge um, house at the very front was built in about 1927 and then the other four cottages at the back were workers cottages built in around 1884 and they were pretty run down and they were purchased in about 1998 and they started doing renos on them and they renovated the front Partridge into what's the boudoir and the Camelot now which are themed rooms and it used to be called Rotten Row where we stayed in and we saw some pictures that look, that showed um, what it looked like prior to the reno and what it looked like as the reno was going on. They did an amazing job doing them up. And we have the English, Irish, Scottish and Welsh rooms which are all, very, all themed as well. They're reasonably priced anywhere from between about $120 a night to $150 to $160 a night depending on the season. But they're away from Lonnie as well, they're quite, it's 
it's quite quiet where you stay, you don't hear a lot of the traffic noise. We stayed in the city before at Lonnie and um, in some of the hotels are really close to the CBD and we found that the hoons get round and they start doing laps of the main and just revving their cars throughout the evening so this was a much nicer place, much quieter place to stay. There are lots of other quiet and beautiful places to stay here in Lonnie um, but this is just one that I don't know it's quite sentimental. We stayed here on holiday many years ago and we've just continued to come back um, on occasion. We headed north of Launceston up to a little place called Exeter. Once we got to Exeter, we took the turn off to Devonport. And along that road, you will see the turn off to Nwarumpetu National Park. And this is where we are right now. If you don't have a parked pass, you will need to stop at the ranger station and make sure that you get one of those as well as pay your camping fees. Grab a couple of tokens for the hot showers as well. From the ranger station, you have another three to four kilometers of a drive down to Bankers Point where you'll find the campsites. All of the campsites come with their own designated fire pits and they are all flat and easily accessible. There are a couple that give you an outlook onto the beach as well. In just a short time, we had our campsite set up and we were ready to explore. All right, so we're in, in the Norwon Patu, I think that's what it's called. We've got our new guest, Butane Lantern. New husband. Kindling. A fire pit that's specifically here for you. Burn. <laughs> and here's the swag set up. Most importantly, most importantly, there's what some beer coming. What do you want? What do you want? And the beach is just down the road. Um, yeah, I'll have one of those German ones. And I'm about to set this up. I'm hoping to catch some dinner tonight. Come fishy fishy, get on my hook and in my belly. <laughs> Walk down from our campsite, probably about 100 metres. And we are now on the beach. <laughs> Little pebble, pebble sandy beach. <laughs> Jeff's already told me I've got no hope in catching any fish. I never said that. You did. I said my catch. You watch. I, I did my own line, my own fishing line. It's got a snap. And I'll put it in and I'm going to catch the biggest fish he's ever seen. And then he'll take his words back. Little ghost. Yeah, go on. Keep going. No, I'm done. No, you're not done. I'm, I am. I am until I get my big fish. So what are we doing here, Gert? We're going to walk up. It's just across the... Um, the water is Port Sorrel. Oh, okay. Just over there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Went into the drop toilets, they were a bit gross. Yeah. Oh, there they had cubicles there, and I think there was about five drop toilets in the women's, and um, I think that accumulated smell just. Ugh. You came out, your face was the same colour as your shirt. Yeah, because I've been holding my breath that long. <laughs> a couple of bloody great sites along here. I mean, most of them are tucked away up there, so you can't see the beach. But there's about two, I think, so far that we've seen right on the edge of the, of the, uh, of the water here. It's a caravan pack mm. parked up here. And uh, what a nice Right on the water. Fantastic. Yeah. There's a wallaby there. There's a wallaby. Hang on. We'll put this down. There he is. He's camping too. <laughs> Speaking of fish, this is what I'm going to catch. Hey. I'm thinking a bit of trevally. Oh, salmon. Just telling me that this is the best spot that I should go fishing right here. Two different colours of ocean. It is a little hard to walk because it's really, really soft to me. I actually went in about halfway up my cast just up the beach back there. G'day guys, it's Jeff here from Canon Tourists on the other half of Allison, although I'm the male version. Guys, we are up here at uh, Baker's Beach, which is in between Port Sorrel, which is straight across there. I don't know if you can see that, can you see that? Port Sorrel, beautiful little place. But over here we're in a national park called, what's it called now? Yavon Puta. I like doing that because you can't say it, and uh, I'm not going to disrespect anyone by trying to say it. But oh, anyway, <laughs> If you come up here, absolutely beautiful part of the world. Um, campsites inside here, the bay out here. You can bring a boat. 
and uh, launch it on the beach, which we're going to do next time, and uh, get out and have a bit of a fish just out here because I think there's some flathead waiting to be uh, to be eaten. At uh, what is it, Al? Probably two and a half. No, it'd be three, three and a half hours, I reckon, from uh, from Hobart to here or probably a 20 minute drive from Devonport. So anyone coming off the Spirit of Tasmania can get here in about 20 minutes, but uh, park fees still apply. You've got to have a national park pass. Um, Al's just been to the toilet, as you know, and they're a little bit on the nose, but at least they're okay and they're clean because they're serviced regularly. So nice little place. We've got a beautiful day here today. So we've had probably three or four days would have been uh, in the rain. So a lot of people away at the moment. Uh, school holidays here. But the place is empty, obviously, because of COVID, or if you're a rich person, COVID. Um, that's what they say, COVID, not COVID. But uh, beautiful down here today in Tasmania. Look at this for a glorious day. But, uh, stay tuned, guys. We'll show you a bit more around the place, and uh, hopefully you can come here one day and enjoy it yourself. Who was that man? <laughs> I'm having a good time here sitting in the sun, looking at the water. Just not happy. He's, he ran out of beer. <laughs> uh oh. <gasps> He's brown eyed on camera. <laughs> I can't use that material now. So that's the name of the park. Now I don't want to poo. He's heckling me about fishing. I haven't even started yet. Don't listen to him. Drug, drugs, drugs and dogs prohibited at this park. <laughs> I'm really not sure how you pronounce this one. I should have asked. I probably should have asked the ranger when we were in the visitors information centre, so that I did it correctly, and so as not to offend any of the locals. What? I should get to smell this. You want to go in there? <laughs> I just told him I brought the first aid kit, but I don't know that there's enough band aids for an axe. We've had um, the blue wrens, and now we've got another friend to camp. Very friendly. I'm just wondering how many possums and wallabies we're going to see tonight, or potaroos. We've called this one Betty. She's been hanging around camp the whole time. Yep. G'day guys, welcome back to Baker's Point here in Tasmania. Uh, as you can see, have a quick look around. We've got the campfire going. We've just got back from fishing, and uh, tonight we're going to do a little bit of uh, cooking for you. And let me tell you, it's going to be some beautiful fish, isn't it, Al? <laughs> oh, that's a dig of and a half, isn't it? No, we're not cooking fish tonight. Because, we're not uh, cooking fish. Cushion, we're not cooking, <laughs> we're fish not cooking them either. Because we didn't catch any. But I just wanted to show you guys, we just uh, bought this this afternoon or yesterday. It's the new Gasmate twin stove. I don't know if you use one of these for Al. But these are gypsies. I love them. Look at this. They just flop off she goes and away you go. I was going to do a bit of a cook up tonight. I am. And uh, what are you cooking for us? I'm cooking stir fry honey soy. That sounds crap. But anyway, let's have a look today. <laughs> let's heat the pan up, guys. Stick, stick around. Uh, I was going to cook up some honey soy stir fry for us. Hi, viewers. I'm off with simplicity here in the kitchen. I've got um, two utensils that you need. It's just a spoon and a fork. And your ingredients are some coconut oil. 
a bit of a thing from Woolies. Watch out, you don't burn the cord there, Jeffy. Oh, yeah? shit, sorry. Um, some superfood vegetable stir fry mix and some honey soy chicken skewers. So, this is how you go about making up a decent meal for tonight's cooking. Right. Eating. Sounds like shit. But anyway, All right, let's, so. Let's do it. <coughs> Everything's covered in plastic these days. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Need a little bit of oil. Jesus, not too much. Hey? Not too much. This is going to be great. This is going to be great, guys. <laughs> Hang on, I'll use the fork. Hang on, watch. <laughs> this is going to be good viewing. Good viewing. Hey, here we go. All right. A bit of that. What are you using there? Coconut oil. Coconut oil. What are you using coconut oil for? Because I wanted something that I could take in the car that wasn't going to leak. Oh, and, oh, <laughs> and, and this was a jar a with idea. a lid on it, that's so I idea. thought that was the safest bet. That's a good idea. All right, right. what are you doing first? Uh, uh, I think I'm going to do the skewers first. Right. So here I've got some honey soy chicken skewers that I bought from Woolies. Oh, the Woolies skewers. Yeah, they're already pre-packaged. And now, why wouldn't you make your own, Al? Too lazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> why would you cook them on the skewer? Why are you taking them off for? Because they're already been marinating. Right. And... Um, and it's a bit hard to eat thick in your salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good, so good it's just... Good have you noticed we've got an abundance of wrens around here? Did I do, I did. Guys, I if did. you don't know what wrens are, they're little blue little birds. And they're absolutely beautiful, aren't they? They are, they yeah, are. Beautiful. And we've got, oh, we've got a little um, wallaby over there. He's got a, a pup in a pouch. Really? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, geez, this is kind of a bit funny. We're getting ready for him to put him on the barbecue, aren't we? Okay. All right, so. All right, tell me more. So What's happening? I'm getting a bit messy. It's getting messy. Um, yeah, so cooking off the, the meat from this one because it's already marinated and it's on the stick. It's, just, it's so simple. Oh, All right. Yeah, I'm seeing it. So, what are you going to put this, the, the veggie mix in with that as well, eh? Or what? Um, yeah, it's got clean hands. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I'll, show you some, I'll show you some rinse while Al's doing that. Look, here's a little mate over here. Look at him. Hey, buddy. Hey, anyway, sweetness. Oh yeah, look at that cat. Hello, mate. You got a little one inside you, haven't you? Hey. Yes, you have. Hello, darling. Smile for the camera. Look at you. You don't even care I'm here, do you? Hey. If you're hanging around for Alison's cooking, you're in the wrong place, buddy, because we're all probably going to die. All right. Just letting you know. How close are you can let me get? Hey. Not that close, anyway. There's a red. Oh, shoot back. Okay, we're back. Yep, so it's smelling very honey and smelling very soy. Right. Would you put the veggies in now with it? Um, yeah, I could. Yeah. But I'm going to cook off the meat first. And then what, take it out? No, and then I'm going to chuck the veggies in. Well, why do you put the veggies in and cook it with the meat? Oh, eat. look, are you criticising me? You no. You can't get my bourbon. It's sitting over there. I'm just asking. Can you hold that then? No. Oh. All right, hey, yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Here's a little plug for, for Rain and Horn. If you're in Hobart and you want to buy a house, he's, uh, he's Rain and Horn. Go and see Matt Khan. Matt Khan, Rain and Horn, Rosling. Yeah. Oh, it's all struggling. There's a bit of uh, hand gel sanitizer, they call it down here. All right, now, you take your specially stir fry mix from all these. All right. You crack open the baggie. Yep. And you just dump it in, eh? That's what I like to see. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Go for it. Another bit of plastic. Oh. We're trying to reduce our um, carbon footprint here, but plastic everywhere now. Probably when you're buying stuff that's wrapped in um, plastic, it doesn't quite work out that way. There's a drink there with your rain and horns. Thank you. Floor. Yeah, we probably need a bit of liquid in there. Something. One agency, Ben Palmer. Might need a bit of water. Hang on a second. A bit of bourbon. No, no, no. Put the bourbon. Is it going to be all right? Honey. Oh, you don't. Al, honey and bourbon. Oh. Al, bourbon and honey. Oh. No. Bourbon and honey would be nice. Just saying, it'd be nice. Uh, she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Give that a stir. Mmm, a bit of bourbon. No, woo, woo, woo. Yeah, a bit of water. Now you're going crazy now. Who puts water in food? <laughs> <laughs> huh? How's, it, how's that cooking going? You want me to turn it up? I'll turn it up on a high. Yeah, I thought it was on high. No, no, no. All right, and then that's pretty much it, guys. Seriously? I mean, <laughs> I was going to say, 
And two ingredients and two utensils and it's oh actually it's three, including the fire pan. But um, that, that's how I like cooking. Simple. If you like this recipe guys, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, give us a thumbs down because I'm giving it oh well, I don't know, I haven't eaten it yet. Well I reckon it's gonna be awesome. What's the green stuff in there? Um it's a good question, I don't know. What is it? It might be kale. Oh Jesus. Oh uh, no, no, I don't think it is kale. It's I coming it's... up alright, Al. Hey? It's coming up alright. Of course it is. Hey, do we have anything to serve this on? Yeah, plates. Oh, nice. <laughs> So what are you guys doing this weekend? You going away camping? Because, uh, yeah, super food vegetables. There you go, super food. It's got to be kale. It? What are you pointing at? I'm pointing at your rice bread. I don't know you are, are you? I am. Add brown rice, it says. Yeah, well, no, we're not adding brown rice. Oh. There you go, guys. It's a little bit of a, a Woolies. Nah, not. Who's promoting Woolies? I'm not. Yeah, turn that up. Um, I would have cut up all these vegetables myself, but I just couldn't be bothered buying every single one and doing it. Does it need more bourbon? All right. How did it no. taste? Did it taste alright? Uh, no, it didn't really. Yeah. It might have. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I'm going to keep frying this up. Yep. And um, yeah, we'll be sitting down having some taco by the fire pretty soon. Cool. And what are we up to tonight, mate? Um, eating by the fire. Yep. Drinking by the fire. Yep. I'm going to do a bit of stargazing tonight. Oh yeah, look at eight. Just, just these blue skies. Let's show them. Nothing much to see there, but yeah. it's blue skies, isn't it? And we are, we are out in the middle of nowhere, so that means we don't get a lot of light from the city, which is going to be great. Oh. And uh, we're looking forward to checking out some satellites oh. and, the star, and stargazing. Hmm. And whatever else you see in the star these days, in the star, in the sky these days that you don't see yeah. when you're um, yeah, sitting at home. So look up, everybody. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. It's important to look up. Yeah. Important to look down at your cooking too to make sure it's not burning. Let's have a look at it. How's it going? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Mm. All right. Smells good. That smells right, doesn't it? Mm. I well, it tastes good. I don't think it will, but anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's have a crack at it and see what it is. <laughs> <Let's try. laughs> Come back tomorrow night Aha. for my next recipe. What's on tomorrow night? Um, another bag of stuff with some meat. <laughs> we'll just hang in there. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> see you tomorrow, guys. Bye. And on that note, we'll leave it right there. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one. Oh, and the um, possums like the meal too, by the way.